Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Psychology Network. Today's topic which we would be doing is Methods of Physiological Psychology. The wordings of this topic I have exactly taken from the UGC Net syllabus booklet. You can find this under Unit 4, which is the Biopsychology. So methods of physiological psychology, usually the two methods we talk about is the invasive methods and non-invasive methods. That's also what it's given in the syllabus. So the invasive methods would have few divisions and under those divisions, there would be several other subtypes as well. So in this video, I might be doing few invasive methods and there would be a series of video which uh, you just have to see those series of videos for your uh, summary, for your recap of the entire topic. You do not need to go find out topics in different books and read through them. You just need to listen to what I'm saying, what I'm teaching and listen to these videos and your summary, your recap, your studying just before the exams would be done. You can even look through these videos while you are studying as your first form of study as well because I am doing these videos in a very detailed manner and in a very simple manner so you understand because this is one of the topics I've seen students struggling. They do not understand which is invasive, which is non-invasive, what falls, where they get confused. So I have deconstructed it as you can say and put it very simply. So the invasive methods are the stereostatic, stereotaxic surgery. And this is, I wouldn't call this as a, another division because stereotaxic surgery is needed uh, during lesion techniques, during microelectrode uh, studies. So uh, just for the studying purpose, just for it to make it easier for you, stereotaxic surgery is the first one. Then we have degeneration techniques, we have lesion techniques, which have lesion and ablation are the same thing, which have these divisions. Then we have microelectrode studies, which also have divisions, which you're going to see in just a few seconds. Then we have chemical methods. The two chemical methods we would be studying is the cerebral dialysis and uh, two deoxyglucose technique. We'll start off, I'll just give a rundown of what are the non-invasive, in this video we will only be studying about the invasive methods, but I'll just give you an understanding of what is non-invasive methods as well. The two divisions are structural methods and the functional methods. So basically structural methods, it is just giving you an understanding of the structure of the brain like where is the frontal lobe where is the occipital lobe how is the occipital lobe looking what is how is uh, the limbic system looking how it is looking the structure not the function now functional methods pet which is the positron emission tomography was the first method to give the functions of the brain to find out what are the functions of the brain and functional methods are proven better to show what kind of disease if there are clots or any kind of disorder if the person is having now let's go to micro electrode studies so what are micro electrodes if you can see these these are micro electrodes it's almost thinner than hair and these go deep inside the cell and they give us readings when there is a action potential or a membrane potential so uh, which record basically these are recording devices these micro electrodes so the first one which we would be studying is the intracellular unit recording and this is a moment to moment recording and this is um this grades the fluctuations in one's neurons membrane potential Membrane potential, I'm sure you have heard that, you know, that there's a membrane, there's K++, Na++, which is more and that, th that one is called membrane potential. Action potential is the firing of the neurons. Just keep that in mind when we are studying microelectrode studies. If you need to do a recap, you can just go and just read quickly on the Google or any other book, what, it, what is action potential and what is membrane potential, because we would be working with those here. 
So intracellular recording actually works with the membrane potential. And this works on immobilized animals because if the animal is keep uh, if the animal keeps on moving, then intracellular unit recording is difficult. So two things you have to understand: it is a moment by moment record. It is on a person's uh, sorry a neuron's membrane potential, and it is on immobilized animals. Immobilized animals means animals which are not moving. So then we go to extra. cellular unit recordings now this extra cellular uh, unit recording these are recording action potentials this one was recording membrane potential extra cellular unit recording is the uh, recording the action potential of a neuron through a microelectrode all of them are using a microelectrode that's why it's called microelectrode studies now what is happening here directly here the in the first one the micro electrode is put directly in a neuron but here it's put it's positioned in a extra cellular fluid next to a neuron so every time when a neuron is firing it is firing that's why we are studying the action potential there is an electrical disturbance and the blip it's recorded at the electrode tip so accordingly extra cellular unit recording provides a record of the firing of a neuron which is the action potential and no information about the neuron's membrane potential and it is difficult to record extra cellularly from a single neuron in a freely moving animal without the electrode tip shifting away from the neuron but it can be accomplished with other flexible microelectrodes so here also the animal is immobilized in the multiple unit recording again it is picking the signals from many neurons see multi unit recordings a lot of neurons see so many a single unit isolation see one is firing again another is firing so mul multiple unit recording is it is picking signals from many neurons the first one which we had studied it was only one neuron but in multiple unit recording we are picking up signals from many neurons and the slight shifts in its position due to movement of the subject have little effect in this one the animal has to be kept immobilized even in the first one intracellular unit recording but in the multiple unit recording there can be that the animal is moving now again this is the last one of the microelectrode studies which is the invasive eeg recording so again it's done on animals eeg signals are recorded through large implanted electrodes these are the electrodes rather than through the scal uh, rather than through the scalp electrodes it is implanted okay cortical eeg signals are frequently recorded through the stainless steel uh screws whereas subcortical eeg signals are typically recorded through stereotaxically implanted wire electrodes so stereotaxic surgery uh, they have a apparatus where the animal is put and then there is a rod like thing which is implanted to record uh the eeg signals you will we will just be studying about this stereotaxic surgery then it would get more clearer for you so now as i told you in the beginning stereotaxic surgery is one of the first steps which is uh, which takes place in biopsychological experiments so it's not very it's not secluded from other other non invasive pro procedures it is almost a part of the non invasive procedures or the first part or the first step so the stereotaxic surgery is by means which the experimental device which is the electrode which we were talking about are precisely positioned in the depths of the brain so how would we know where we are putting this this is a brain now electrodes are very thin sorry electrodes are very thin where are we putting how would we know we have to put here how would we know by the that the electrode has to have to be put here we will know that by the stereotaxic surgery and during the stereotaxic surgery two things are required which is the stereotaxic atlas and the stereotaxic apparatus now stereotaxic atlas look at it as a geographical atlas um like 
the the atlas geographical atlas will say where which continent is or where which mountain is in the same way the stereotactic atlas would tell us where is which part of the brain is suppose see, this is the target lesion if you can see this red thing the dot which i've circled this is the target for lesion now this is the map stereotactic map and this is the target of lesion so in this map we can identify which is the target for lesion and then on the on the animal which we are doing the procedure on see now uh, the few things few wordings which you have to know from this is that the skull is composed of several bones that grow together and form sutures like this one that one um so when the newborn baby is born if you touch the middle of the head you would find it's a bit it's not very hard it's quite liquid not liquidy but it's not very hard and it's um jelly like you can feel there is something jelly like inside under it so it's the soft spot of the newborn babies at the junction of the coronal and the sagittal sutures which is called the fontanelle now once this this gap closes there is a gap that's why we find it it's a bit liquidy or it's not very hard there but when the gap closes the junction is called the brema and brema in the greek is called the front of the head but it's on top of the head usually which you can see but in the greek the literal meaning is front of the head so a stereotactic atlas which contains the photographs or the drawings see very uh, precise drawings that correspond to the frontal section taken at various distances rostral and caudal to the brema now rostral and called caudal if i have to get into that i have to teach you that the brain then it's you know divided and then you know um, how it's divided and from this area which is the rostral and which is the caudal so i'm not going to into that but just understand the concept of stereotactic atlas what is fontanelle and what is brema now coming to the stereotactic atlas uh, sorry apparatus so the apparatus basically the animal is kept here and the brema my drawing is in the best but there's a the animal suppose and here would be the brema because this two part of the head would be between this and this one so the stereotactic instrument would have two parts usually which is the head holder this would be this is the head holder actually this entire part is the head holder which firmly holds the persons of oh, sorry not person but the subject you can see a person there have been st stereotactic surgery on humans as, as well but in this case if we talk about animals so it firmly holds the animal's brain in the position where it needs to be and there is an electrode holder the electrode which would go in that is a holder which holds the device to be inserted uh, this is a very new stereotactic apparatus which you are looking at uh, in the books which you are, which is usually recommended to you your pinel or your carlson uh, you would see a older version of the stereotactic apparatus and remember this a system of precision gears allows the electrode holder to be moved in three dimensions you have to remember these three dimensions anterior posterior anterior posterior dor dorsal ventral and lateral medial anterior posterior dorsal ventral and lateral medial uh you might get a question from ugc on this but usually ugc asks more like uh, understanding analytic questions so understand what these are the stereotactic apparatus and the atlas the last topic for this video i would be talking is the chemical methods and then the lesion methods uh, techniques i would make another video on that so the chemical methods there are two which we talk about the first one which we would be talking about is the 2dg which is which is deoxyglucose technique so what happens is that animal is injected with this radioactive 2dg injected the animal is injected while the kind of 
activity the scientist is interested to study that the animal is made to do and in that point the radioactive 2dg is injected in the animal now the brain's main source of energy is glucose and 2dg is uh, similar to the structure of glucose chemically the structure of glucose and the radioactive 2dg are quite similar so the neurons active during the test the test which is given observe at a high rate but do not metabolize it it is just there suppose this is the structure of the brain this is the brain structure um, which is needed for that activity so what happens the 2dg goes here and it absorbs but it does not metabolize it just gets absorbed it's just there so the 2dg goes here and it's just there then the subject is killed and its brain is removed and sliced and when it is sliced it is seen that this part of the brain um this part of the brain has that glucose then they would understand okay this activity which the animal was doing is related to this part of the brain so if suppose a, a rat is there and the rat is injected this 2dg while given something to eat or maybe a uh, cross a uh, puzzle so while it's crossing the puzzle and that 2dg concentrates on a certain part of the brain because they also have to use their brain so they understand that part of suppose the part of brain uh, that part of the brain brain part a is needed for crossing the puzzle this is how they know which part of the brain is related to which activity so this is what your uh, use, usage of 2dg is now the cerebral dialysis is a method measuring the extracellular concentration of specific neurochemicals in behaving animals now this is the same thing but the subjects are not killed not exactly the same thing uh so what happens is the cerebral dialysis involves the implantation of the brain of a fine tube with a short semi permeable section is positioned in a brain structure of interest so that the extracellular chemicals from the structure will diffuse into the tube now once in the tube they can be collected for freezing storage and later analysis or they can be carried in solution directly to the chromatograph what is a chromatograph a device uh, which measures the chemical constituents of liquid or gases so in this case uh, the subject or any animal which is put into the test uh, they do not have to be killed so but just that the tissues are extracted uh this is all which i would be teaching in this video so we covered the chemical methods we covered the uh, covered the stereotaxic surgery and we covered the microelectrode studies what is left is degeneration techniques and lesion techniques which i would be covering in a second video the th third video would be on the non invasive methods so please subscribe so you get the notification when i upload the other halves other half i wouldn't say but the other parts of the videos of methods of physiological psychology thank you so much for listening and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel